talk stroke. I appreciate you all being here. And just to reiterate, this show is about spreading awareness about stroke, TBI, um, aphasia, brain injury, but also to provide a platform for survivors to t share their stories, their journey um, from all across the world, and to show that um, every brain injury is different. I also bring on experts in the brain health industry to share their expertise. So let's start with uh, this morning's guest is the one and only Ella Sophia, and she not only had a AVM that caused two strokes at 14 years young, but she's also a social media icon as well as a um, motivational speaker. So please share this content. Really, really share because you don't know who's going through um, things that uh, that can use this content. So make comments, ask questions, um, and uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, start this show? Everybody's Please relax and comment. All righty, and good morning, Mike and Chandra that are here and Mark. So let's go ahead and bring on Ella, and please, again, make comments, and uh, let's have a great time. Bye. Good morning. I'm bursting with excitement right now, especially after good? that music. <laughs> I know. It puts you in a good mood. I'm so hyped Exactly. Up. I'd love to say everybody here that uh, Heather, I'm sure you know some of the people here, and uh, Michelle, and uh, and. Teresa, I call her T, and Mark Harder. So thank you guys for being here. And again, make um, comments and ask questions because Ella is the one you want to ask questions. Um, so Ella, I'm so happy you're here. Thank you you're for so having inspiring. me. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm so happy to be here. Good, good. Christy, Marina, thank you guys for showing up here. Um, you probably recognize some of the other, I'm not sure if you recognize some of the folks out here. Yeah, I recognize some names. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, so why don't we just uh, jump right into it? And uh, Ella, let's maybe we can rewind the clock for some people that have not seen the last show. So yes. who, who is Ella? Sounds good. So my name is Ella. I am going to be 28 in a few months. So about 14, almost 14 years ago, um, when I was 14 years old, I had a stroke caused by an AVM rupture. So um, I had an AVM, um, arteriovenous malformation. That's what AVM stands for. And that we didn't know about sitting in my cerebellum. And so over time, um, I didn't have any symptoms whatsoever. I didn't have any headaches or anything like that that would have caused me to, um, to go to the hospital or have an MRI. And we're going to school nice and early um, because I had a soccer practice. I just made the varsity soccer team. So I was going for the first practice as a team and had the practice, went to my first class, second class, then all of a sudden I went to my third class and this headache started coming on. And it was really weird because I'd never complained of a headache before and it hurt really badly. Um, and so I didn't really know what was going on. My friend sitting next to me said, maybe you just need to grab a bite to eat. And so I said, yeah, lunch is next period. We'll just go grab a bite in the cafeteria and then I'll finish up with my last class. So the headache kept on getting worse and I still didn't know what was going on. I figured um, I'm not gonna go home because if I call my parents to come pick me up because of a headache, they're gonna flip out. <laughs> so I might as well just go to my final class, which was drama. And so I uh, grabbed my books, walked into my very last class. And at that point, I think my body and my head just couldn't take it anymore um, with the pressure and the blood building up in my head. And um, I just, I passed out. Wow. How old were you? I had three months after my 14th birthday. Just wow. turned 14. Yeah. See, it happens to any, you know, age, they don't discriminate. I mean, yep. 
stroke or AVM. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It could happen anytime. And, and the scariest part was that I never had any headaches or symptoms. Like I, I know some people say they always complain of headaches and then they would go for an MRI and that's when they find, would find, they say aneurysm or the AVM, right. but it could happen with it. Uh, always be mindful of what you're feeling up there in your head. Right, right. Absolutely. It's incredible. So that's an amazing story. So now you're just about 28 years old. Yeah. So I am, I've lived lived half of my life pre-stroke and half of my life post-stroke. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Um, just to say hello and recognize there, you know, Robin. Hi, Robin. Yep. Hi, Michelle, Tammy, yep. Heather. Yvonne. You know, Yvonne. Yvonne. She's from... Um, Greece, right? Yeah. yeah. Athens, Greece. They're yeah. also having some serious fires. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I saw, geez, hopefully you guys are all okay over there in Greece. You're safe. Hopefully Yvonne. Exactly. Um, you, know, you can see, um, Mike Peters, you know, and I appreciate you guys asking questions. He's got a question. Can you look at that one there? You see it? How can a 14 year old deal with the stroke? I feel like a failure now. That's such a good question, Mike. Um, is it, do you mind if I go ahead and touch on it, Jerry? No, please do. I'll, I have, you know, everybody needs to ask questions and, you know, we'll get into your, uh, what you're doing now. So. Okay. Um, so geez. When, so when I first had my stroke, Mike, um, I had no idea what a stroke was. I didn't know what a brain a, uh, AVM was. I like really didn't have an understanding of what happened to me nor did any of the doctors really educate me on what happened. Um, and so I honestly didn't grow up thinking I had a brain injury. Um, I just thought something happened to me. I'm better now. And like, I'm just going to live my life. Um, and so I didn't impose a lot of limitations on myself. I didn't impose any limitations on myself. And so I think it was really a blessing in disguise that um, I didn't know what happened to me. Right. Um, and that's how I was able to fight through it. Although on the other hand, because I didn't know what happened to me, I was, um, I was still noticed all these changes cognitively and nobody was validating those changes. Nobody said, Hey, um, yeah, you might notice some changes in your cognition or the way that you think or the way that you operate because you had a brain injury. So there was a downside to it as well. But at the end of the day, I don't have any regrets um, on the way I was treated. I only would hope that anybody else in my position in the future does get at least a little bit of education on, you know, if they have a brain injury, just give them a heads up as to what the uh, deficits could be for them so they can actually take notice and feel more comfortable um, rehabilitating mentally or physically. Yeah, yeah. Good answer, Mike, or Ella, Mike says. Um, so Michelle's asking you a question as well. Um, let's see. Oh, where? It, I put it on the screen. I'm not sure if you can see it. Do you okay. have any physical changes uh, oh. slash deficits from it? Oh, yeah, there we go, right on the screen. Thank you. Um, so right after, immediately after um, the stroke, the my entire left side, this is, I guess, your right, my left. Yeah, yeah. All good. Um, but, but it was weaker. You can kind of sometimes even see when I talk, the, this one side doesn't like want to lift. I have to be very cognizant of enunciating when I'm speaking. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't a walker for maybe like three, three, four months. Um, speech language pathology, really, really bad short term memory loss. Um, and then, of course, the weakness on the left-hand side. So I had the OT and PT as well. Um, but, Michelle, I think because I was so young, I was 14, and I was an athlete, and I was healthy, I think that really, really helped me um, rehabilitate and overcome a lot of those physical deficits um, pretty quickly. Yeah, that's, that's terrific. I mean, just for your how young you were to kind of over, overcome maybe an older person, takes a lot longer, but also I, Mike's also asked another question. 
uh, how was how was your mental health? And I know we've talked about this because like this morning, I mean, people, they look on the outside and say, oh, you don't look like you had a stroke. And I keep thinking, okay, what am I supposed to look like? They don't mm -hmm. know the emotional stuff inside that we all go through. Mm -hmm. So you, you still go through that, don't you? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, after the stroke, nobody was really, nobody validated a lot of the changes that I was experiencing. Um, and so I started repressing all these thoughts and these negative feelings um, because I noticed I was so different and I just figured, okay, well, nobody's validating these things. I don't know why these things are happening. I must just be like a stupid or crazy person. Yeah. Um, and I know I was already, uh, I had maybe a little bit, uh, I had poor mental health um, prior to my stroke as well. Really? And so after the stroke, it really just exacerbated everything. Um, and so I pretty much spent 10 years post-stroke repressing all my thoughts and repressing all my feelings until the point where I really just, I couldn't take it anymore. Um, I reached my my tipping point. And um, I think when I was on your show before Jerry, you know, I mentioned I did try to commit suicide. And that was, thank God, actually, the, the, the thing that really helped lead me to my breakthrough, as I like right. to say. Absolutely. I, I see what Lynn right here, which is so true, invisible issues. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but you really made it make it. Um, you made a big difference. I mean, I, I really want to emphasize everybody to go to your web. There's so much information here. Um, I, right here, retrainyourbrain.ca slash. And I, I go through there quite a bit. There's so much information on there that Thank you. you have done an amazing job on that. I mean, Thank you. just the way you, I wish everybody can go through the website right now and look at it and look at all the information on there because it really does. Um, it made a difference with me just looking at that website, what you have did. Um, and I, I'm seeing all the comments. You, can you see all these comments that people are saying? Yeah, I appreciate it so much, everybody. Um, and you know, the reason I started that website um, was because, well, it was right after, so end of 2017 was when I had my little mental health crisis and, um, you know, tried to take my own life. And once I started spending the time to get better, I kind of started, I recognized all these things that I was were doing and mindset changes, like you need to change your mindset. But if you are so at your rock bottom, and you're having such a hard time with motivation, somebody just saying, Oh, let's change your mindset. Like it's so much easier said than done. Like, how do you change your mindset? You have to actually follow a set of instructions, do different activities, do uh, like tactical exercises, and then a mindset change will follow. And so as I started doing all these different tactical things, I figured I need to share these with people and just share all the things that I've been thinking about to change my own mindset. And so I started the blog and um, amazing people have been finding it very helpful. And I really appreciate you uh, giving it a shout out, Jerry. Oh, absolutely. We, we really need to. And uh, so, I mean, you're a habit coach. Yeah. So I really wanted to specialize in something that I felt everybody could find useful, brain injury or not, but would also be particularly useful to people who have had brain injuries. Right. And so um, because, again, my brain injury was in my cerebellum, um, I have difficulty with coordination. And so when I have to adapt or be agile when there's a change, it might take a few seconds longer for me to sort of um, figure out how to adapt, like operating just takes a little bit longer. And so then, and then I guess, um, if I'm doing that, I'm expending more energy, both mentally and physically, right. Mm -hmm. um, and I know everyone here, a lot of people here are probably experienced neuro fatigue, and, you know, expending energy mentally or physically is going to lead you to become very tired. And so I figured, if you can automate Um, these are habits, then you're going to be expending a lot less energy and you're going to be a lot less tired. And because these things are habits, it's going to be easier for you to implement them day to day. Um, so I just started to 
read up on habit, try to become an expert on it. And, um, and that's what I teach people when they want to work with me one on one, or I even have a, a course. And I also do group sessions, trying to teach them how to implement these, these automated behaviors into their day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I hate to keep go reiterating, but I actually do. Uh, retrainyourbrain.ca slash. You guys should, I saw that uh, Yvonne said she's going to go to your site. Oh, awesome. Thanks, you guys, Yvonne. Yeah, you guys need to. It really is so much information there that's, you know, not the norm information that we always see out there, you know. Um, and also there's another one. Robin also asked this one. Ella, give us some finger exercises. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that, is that on your page? <laughs> oh, Robin, unfortunately, um, yeah. I have no physical, like, PT or OT type of exercises. Um, but I think a lot of us know Dr. Nick here. And yeah. I can definitely send him a message after and get him, uh, get some info from him as far as finger and uh, hand yeah. exercises for you. Yeah, great idea on that. Um, yeah, because uh, there's so many you can do. I know that. Some people are using that uh, the most hand. Yes, I am. But uh, but as far as little finger exercises, I know you know doing this. Um, there's a lot. I mean, I, I think we all have been taught that in uh, in uh, OT. But um, so if it's a uh, if if you're a habit coach, there's also um, um, I was going through the three key differences between habit and routine. Mm. Do you mind? Yes, yes. That is one of my favorite ones. And then, yeah. Teresa, just to answer your question, if you just go to your URL, and I don't know if there's a button on the screen here, but if you just go to your URL and type retrainyourbrain.ca, you should be able to get there. Yeah, um, it's really easy. Yeah. Uh, T, if I could find it, you know, anybody can. It's really good. It pops right up and then you're going to look there's so much information on there I mean, it's just not one little thing so many um things i mean yeah. you know, i'm trying to think what i'm supposed to be saying the uh oh it's right here um and, and it starts with your story that's kind of the first thing it's your story um and I, I love how you say that um i'll i'll cut to the chase and say say it life is hard yeah yeah and uh T, yes, the, the browser. If you go up to the browser, you're right. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, so um, back to your question, three differences between habit and routine. So um, the reason I wanted to make that post was because I found in this uh, Instagram, online, social media age, everyone's saying, oh, like, implement better habits, implement better habits, but they weren't using the word habit correctly. Great smile. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> um, and so, um, yeah, people were not using the word habit correctly. They were talking about routines and using the word habit instead. And I figured that was because I think people are just trying to get other people to click. Um, it's very clickbaity. They don't really know exactly what they're talking about and they're just using the word habit. And so it was kind of frustrating for me, especially because habit was something I really was trying to become an expert on. And when I'm using words, I want to use them correctly. So I made the video, um, three main, main differences between habit and routine. And basically, um, when it comes down to it, you can remember the difference because routines are intentional behaviors or thoughts that you take. They are intentional. They're totally conscious. You have, they're premeditated. You think about them beforehand. Whereas a habit is a routine plus a, um, sorry, I just got distracted. I got a pop up on my window, <laughs> plus a cue and a reward repeated over and over again until it becomes subconscious. So you're not thinking about it. It doesn't have to be premeditated. So all um, all habits start out as routines. And then when you add a couple other components and repeat them over and over, then they become automatic. Then you don't have to think about them. And that's when they become a habit. So to say, um, like, implement these new habits in your life, like wake up at 6am every morning, do all these things. Well, 
like you don't have to have all that many it's i don't think it's even possible to have so many habits in your day like pick one or two habits figure out how to implement those into your life um and it's okay to have routines as well like you can have both but conflating the two is is not right and if you want to work together this is something that i help you figure out and i help you figure out both habits and routines that you can implement into your life to improve your your mindset and uh your day to day that's true you know i i feel like i'm touching on so much stuff out of your your website um there was one that really stuck with me too is uh don't be afraid afraid of the light yeah yeah so is it that can you explain that yes um that is probably like my favorite piece that i've ever written yeah um it really i think it kind of it sums up everything really well as far as how to transition your rock bottom to your breakthrough and if of course if you need more more detail then um then keep flipping through all the rest of the blogs. But if you want a really good overall summary, that is the the article to read. So I, um, the reason why I use that an analogy is because I felt like life is really, sh it should be a light. It's bright and it's happy, mm -hmm. you know, and you're alive, that's a light. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt like growing up, I was afraid of living. I was afraid of the light. Um, and so eventually, um, after I had that whole scare at the end of 2017, I started implementing this, um, implementing, a, uh, I call it the personal growth loop. And then, um, uh, within that, there are two other steps, um, to transition your rock bottom to your breakthrough. So basically if you want to transition to rock bottom to put breakthrough, number one, you got to start with belief. You have to believe that you can actually make a change. doesn't matter if you have no idea how to do that yet. I had no flipping idea how to transition my rock bottom to my breakthrough. I had no idea if I was ever going to be happy, how was I was going to be happy, how I was going to conquer and battle my mental health. But I started yeah. with the belief that I, I knew I would be able to figure out. So that's step one. And then step two is... I believe it is self-care. I think there's another one, but I don't have it in front of me. So we'll go right to self-care. Sure. Um, and so self-care is basically doing the things that make you happy and, and help you find inner peace. Um, it's not stepping outside of your comfort zone. It's figuring out what your comfort zone actually is. Um, because again, when I was going through rock bottom to break through transition, I didn't have a comfort zone. The comfort zone, the light, life, just, that was scary enough for me. So if you yeah. just take a step back and figure out what are the main fundamental things that I need to be a functional version of myself and then write those down and start implementing those, just, just focus on making yourself happy and be relaxed. That's a self-care step. And then the next step, I'll get to these questions uh, shortly. And then the next step is, uh, I'm, I feel at peace. I feel comfortable. I know what my comfort zone is. Now is the time to take one step outside of the comfort zone. Just one step. Try little, try different things. See what resonates with you. Um, try new hobbies. You, you do have to take one step outside that comfort zone because you need to learn now what it's like to be uncomfortable. And then once you found something that resonates with you, step three of that personal growth loop, personal growth loop is self-discipline. So that just means doing things because you know you should be doing them, not just because you want to be doing them, right? Doing things because they're good for you, no matter how much you want to do them or don't want to do them. Right. And then once you've gone through that whole loop at least once, then you go on to the last step, which is teach. And that's what I want to be doing now, teaching this to other people so that they can use the personal growth loop. They can transition their rock bottom to the breakthrough. And as you teach and as you do that, your happiness is going to spread like a ripple effect and positivity is going to spread. And you're going to become so much more fulfilled and happy with your life. And everything just kind of goes around and around like a loop.
Yeah. So if you so, guys want to check that out, go to my website. You can find it just by scrolling down on the main page. Don't be afraid of the light. Right. And they're, they're also, um, I know there's questions you were going to get to. You can see them all coming through. Uh, but this is how they would reach you. Info.retrainyourbrain at gmail.com. Yeah. So if you guys how to find my website, shoot me an email. With, there we go. Shoot me an email. And then I will definitely get back to you guys. So let's take a look at the questions. Oh, how do I share this on my Facebook? Maybe that's one for you, Jerry. Yeah, that's um. There, there is. If you're watching right now, there is a share button. And if you hit share, it'll take you to different sites, and you can actually go to Facebook or even to your page, uh, Kimmy. Um, and after the show, if you if you still have some difficulty, I have. I'd be more than happy to. Um, walk you through it Let's see awesome and then i saw one from mike peters i think saying yes. i think it's off my screen now but correct me mike um yes. you were asking about faith i think yes. that's, um yes. and yes so i have my little cross around my neck um and i am roman catholic yeah so i do have faith um yeah because yeah, mike peters i'm not sure if you remember from last time his wife is actually a priest Oh, okay. Or none? No. In oh. the UK, yeah. It's, maybe Mike probably can explain that. But yeah, okay, cool. my mother explained it to me, who's very Catholic. Um, she's about 80, oh gosh, sorry mom if you're watching, 83, 84 years old. And uh, she said, in that neck of the woods, you can be a priest and be married. Oh, okay, cool. That's yeah. awesome. And then Let's I see. think somebody If there's else. others, I can actually scroll up. And oh, can you? Okay, yeah, because I don't know yeah. if I can scroll. Let's see. Um, let me just, sorry. I, I know I, I'm looking here. Um, oh, gosh, there's so many. Uh, there is. Is there another? Here, there's not a. Your words are in part. Aw, thank you, Teresa. Yes, there's a. Um, who else is here? Um, me too. I, so many people want you to be their therapist now. I <laughs> saw those. Well, Mike and Robin. Thank you. Um, but yeah, please do ask uh, ask questions, please. Yeah. Um, you know, while um, while we're here, I will say one. I guess I'll share a tip. Um, that's why I'm here, right? Share some tips, but. Um, if you are wanting to make that rock bottom to break through transition, yes. um, one thing that you need to do outside of those steps is you can't expect, and this is going to sound negative probably, but you cannot expect your life to get better. Like, as in... Life is always going to be the same. Um, like, yeah, we can do things personally to stronger and improve your functional movement. But right. there's always going to be bad things happening. There's always going to be challenges. There's always going to be people that are going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. Life is always going to be hard. It's always going to be hard. And so one thing I used to do was when something hard or difficult or bad happened, I figured, oh, like, woe is me. Like, here, it's my life sucks. Like, why does bad stuff always happen to me? Right. But that's that's everybody. That's, unfortunately, bad stuff is always going to happen. Right. And so if you just try to prepare yourself proactively, do things now so that when the bad things do come, you're going to be more ready to face them. And that's, I think, the biggest thing that you can do to transition your rock bottom to your breakthrough. Don't have these high, amazing expectations that things are going to be perfect because they're never going to be. Instead, do things so that you accept the day as it comes. Exactly. Great point. Marina, yes, you're right. wise. Thank you, Marina. Yeah, absolutely. And there was one other um, I wanted to touch on because you – I saw it on somewhere on your 
your your pages. Uh, let's talk about the three steps. I, this is, I, I don't want to be negative either. Uh, three steps to managing suicidal thoughts. Yeah, so that was a part, basically that was part of the um, the Don't Be Afraid of the Light article. I did it in a video format. So actually, if you guys um, prefer video versus um, reading, if it's easier for you, then you can go to my YouTube channel. Um, you can just probably just, or you can go to my blog and then you can get right. to my YouTube channel from my blog. Yeah. And so basically what I've done in that video is I've actually read out that article out loud. Um, and so it breaks it that rock bottom to break through the transition. Um, I hope that you guys can manage your suicidal thoughts just like I do. Yeah, that, that's, that's interesting because I we don't want to talk about it. You know, I mean, it's down deep, well, down deep, a lot worse in the, in the beginning, kept thinking all of that and I didn't know how to handle it. But when you really watch and listen to your videos, I'm, you know, I, again, I, I, there's so much information and you're um, retraining your brain. Um, and I, it's, it's so valuable. Everybody should be going to that. Um, just because I get so much information out of that. And it's really helped me. Um, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. But, yeah. Again, like it's, it's, the goal of the blog is to be more than just Ella's diary or Ella's thoughts. The goal is for you to actually walk away with, with activities and things that you can do to actually start improving your thought in this sort of um, motivational or niche is the actual steps, right? And I think yeah. that that's, that's so important. We can't overlook that. Absolutely. It's, uh, it, it, you know, thank you for making these comments, everybody, and, you know, asking questions. Um, so there's so much information, and Ella has it. I mean, you, you're a motivational speaker as well, aren't you? Yeah. I almost, we can don't, tell. I almost don't like using that word motivational because, like, that's so short term. Like, motivation comes and goes. And so, I would prefer to provide people with long lasting change. And I don't know if there's a word for that. Um, yeah, I, I just want to be able to help people for the long term, not just for short term spurts of motivation. Um, but I do love yeah. speaking. I love I love talking in front of uh, crowds. Yeah, absolutely. I mean uh, every month. Well, now I'm, I'm going down to every other month. I am part of a workshop called Like Minded. I don't know if you've heard of it, Jerry. I have. And, and you have it on your, again, I go back to your website, but there's a there's a page on there. And I have your thing up here. No one can see it, but I, I can see it right here. But uh, it is on your um, Like Minded. Yeah, I yeah. Gone, I haven't gone through it all. There's so much, you know, it's not just one thing. I mean, you've got so much in there. And it, it touches all. I'm sure it'll touch everybody as well because there's so much information that you're not going to get bored at. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. But yeah, so Like Minded is um, it is a program, a membership program for people who've had brain injuries or caregivers, and there are a bunch of workshops every month when you sign up for the program, um, and I teach workshops there as well. Um, so if you want to come and learn about habits and some improve your daily life then definitely check out like-minded you can find them through my website as well terrific that's terrific I, i'm so glad you're here i mean i probably could be talking with you all day long but um <laughs> is there any other did anything that we did um yeah Delia, you know she, thank you for being here i appreciate it um She's from across the world as well. Um, uh, oh yeah, me across from across the world, or was that somebody else? <laughs> um, Delia. Oh, okay. She knows I butcher her name all the time. Oh, yeah. okay. From uh, Ireland, I believe. Awesome. Um, yeah, uh, I did. Let me see. 
we'll post the website, but I have it right here. Um, oh gosh, look at me here. Just bump. it's retrainyourbrain.ca. David, that's it. Um, but we'll do it. Uh, you know, in the comments, if someone wants to put it there, please do. Um, 75 says, I think your website and videos could help young people, even if they didn't have, I'm guessing like a brain injury. Um, yeah, that's the goal that, um, even if you didn't have a brain injury, um, or any type of rock bottom experience, I, I want, I hope that this will be able to help you because as human beings, we all hit rock bottom. We all feel the same feelings, right? We just yeah. get there in different ways. Um, and so figuring out how to get out of those feelings, um, we can do that in the same way though. And so that's what I hope, um, a lot of my activities and my blog and my website will bring to you guys, figuring out how to get out of those bad negative feelings. Yeah, th that's it, Robin. Perfect. Um, but yeah, retrain your brain.ca all one, you know. Yeah, Salud yeah. added it there as well. Thanks, Salud. Salud. Guys. You're so good, Salud. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so did we miss anything? Because uh, I mean, there's so much information and um, I think everybody should go, go into the website after the show here. But um, is there anything else you want to say before we end? Uh, Gosh. Um, yeah, I think the most like just managing realistic expectations. Um, because again, that for me, that was the biggest thing that would lead to negative thoughts for me is just thinking, oh, here we go again, bad things happening to me. Like my life is always so hard. Um, but that's just life. It's just life. We all when everybody here probably had a brain injury or knows somebody who had a brain injury. We, none of us probably saw that coming. Like we had no idea. I didn't see it coming, um, but it happened, unfortunately. Um, and so now it's just important to ask the question, now what? Now right. what do I do to move forward? Like you can always ask the question, why me or feel bad for yourself? But the question that's actually going to help you get out of the funk is the question, now what? I think that's the most important and simplest thing that you can do for yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, that's terrific. Wow. That's, that's great. Good information there. And, and I hope it helped everybody. And again, share this because uh, again, we don't know what other people are going through. Again, we talk and you know, so many people, you know, well, you don't look like you had a brain injury. Well, you know, what am I supposed to look like? Um, mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, I really appreciate Ella. And, you know, again, we'll have to do this another time. Um, but Thank you, Marina. Appreciate it. Ella made a, a great shoot, show, though. So, so you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So, again, thank you, guys, and uh, Mike Peters. Thanks, Ella. Amazing, and Jerry. Not too bad either. Of course, Mike. <laughs> All right. Well, take care, everyone. We will see you again. Thank you, Ella. Yeah, bye. bye. <laughs>